In our last movie, we talked about the benefits of shooting in the raw file format. Now I need to start to go through the different parts of the interface so we know what each part does and then possibly in the right sequence. So now, just as a quick overview, if we take a look at the top left section of the Camera Raw dialog box, we're going to see that there are a variety of tools up here. We will get into all of these tools at some point in time, but I don't think it's important right now to talk about those individual tools because I believe it's more important to talk about these tabs over here. The very first tab we have here is called the Basics tab. That allows us to make our basic adjustments to our image. Then we have what's known as the tone curve, where we can play with the contrast and lights and darks and all that kind of stuff in a very, very specific manner. Then we have our sharpening and noise reduction in the detail. We have our hue saturation lightness scale that we can actually adjust the hues, the saturation, and how light or dark those individual hues are, or we can just jump right into grayscale with that. We can come over here and do something called split toning. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Over here is our lens correction, and I think it's important that we have Camera Raw find and assign the right profile to your lenses. That'll actually make up for any possible mischaracteristics of your lens in other words, getting rid of pin cushion or barrel distortions. We have our FX tab over here where we can you know, apply some grain if we wanted to and a couple other things. We have the camera calibration tab here, which is what I want to talk about. And then we have the presets and we have snapshots. The other part is up here we have our histogram. And over here we have a little triangle that if we were to click it would show us our shadow clipping. And if I was to click on this, we would see our highlight clipping. Highlight clipping shows up as red in our images and shadow clipping shows up as blue in our images. If I wanted this whole interface to take over my whole screen, all I'd have to do is hit the toggle full screen mode button. This preview checkbox is showing us the before and after of what our image looks like in every individual tab. That's kind of important to try to understand. All right, down the bottom over here, we have our zoom, how we're going to view our image. So we can choose the default, whatever comes up, or we can come in and start to zoom through our image using these various presets, or you can just type in whatever value you want inside there. Down at the bottom here, once we are satisfied with any adjustments we've made, we can click the Done button. What that does is applies all of our adjustments to that XMP file I was alluding to earlier. It doesn't make a PSD file, doesn't make a JPEG file, doesn't make any kind of a pixel-based file. All it does is records the placement of the adjustments that we've done so our image will look like what we wanted it to. In that XMP file tells it how to actually look. We can click cancel and everything we do is gone. We can click on the open image button to take us directly into Photoshop so we can actually do the things that we want to do to this image in Photoshop that we are not capable of doing in Camera Raw. The other thing is we can come over here and we can just save the file. So let's say I make all these adjustments that I really want to do and I want to save this as a PSD, but I don't want to go into Photoshop. I just want to save it as a full high res, uncropped or whatever it is version in Photoshop. So later on I can go. Then you click on this and we'll get into that dialog box a little bit later on as well. So now basically what we need to do in here is we need to take a look at our image and then determine the white balance. Okay, this is the way this whole thing has been set up. Theoretically, we're going to go from left to right through the, working our way through these tabs. And then in each tab, we're going to start at the top and go down to bottom. So the first thing we'd want to do is play with our white balance. We could take the default that we had, which was as shot. There you go. Doesn't look so terrible. We can play around with these guys and we'd end up with custom. Fine. If that's what you want to do, then by all means, go right ahead. We could come down here and we can play with the exposure, brightening our image or darkening our image. 
as a whole. We can play with contrast. We can play just with the highlights, just with the shadow areas, or we can go right to the extreme of the highlights, which is your white, or we can go to the extreme of your shadows, which is your blacks. Dragging things to the left will darken your images. You can see that in the scale here. And dragging things to the right will brighten things. Notice the blacks go from black to dark gray. Notice that the shadows go from really, really dark stuff all the way over to really, really light stuff. So each one of these is a little bit different and unique in itself. The contrast one, if we go to the right, you can see that we have extreme differences between black and white, black and white, light gray, dark gray, light gray, dark gray, blah, blah, blah. And if we come all the way over here, there's no difference. So if we move this contrast slider to the left, we will be taking out contrast, moving it to the right, we'll be increasing contrast. Now, if we take a look down at the bottom three sliders here, we'll see that we have a clarity slider, which has the same look to it, barber pole look, if you will, whatever you want to call it. This is another contrast slider. It is known as a mid-tone contrast slider. In other words, it's not really going to affect the total lights and the total darks of your image, but it's going to work in that middle zone that gray zone in that gradient that we talked about earlier it's going to try to stay in there and it's my belief that almost every image that comes out of a digital camera requires some clarity vibrance and saturation we'll get into all that kind of stuff a little bit later on